For some people with mental illness, there is a voice in their head. And this is true for me. And I initially believed everything it said. Now, it's not an audible voice. It's not somebody else speaking to me. It's my mind. It's my mind generating all this angst and anger and bitterness against me. It's telling me that I am pathetic, that I am hopeless, that nothing I do is worthwhile. Now, if this resonates with you, I want to talk to you a bit about this today because I don't I don't live in that space anymore. I used to uh, at any given time, no matter where I was, no matter what I was doing, I was fighting a battle with my mind, trying to tell it that I didn't, don't, didn't, don't need to die. That suicide is not my only option. I want to talk to you about that today, and I want to talk to you about how to overcome it. That's on STP today. Welcome to Shattered the Podcast. STP is the story of my journey from the depths of mental illness to a place where I could live again. Okay, so maybe you have a mental illness. Maybe you know somebody that has a mental illness. Can't understand why they're so down all the time. It seems to be this thing that they just get down. They're depressed. They're sad. But one of the reasons this happens is that the wiring in their brain has changed and they can't access that happiness, that joy, that idea that there is hope in the world. They're caught in a loop of their mental illness, telling them constantly over and over again in a myriad of ways that they are pathetic, they are hopeless, they are useless. This was me. I would be sitting there quietly and I didn't understand until years later when my wife said that I'm very blank, I'm very, very hard to read, which I didn't realize um, because she'd ask me what was going on. I'd say nothing, typical bloke. And she would say, no, hang on, something, just tell me what you're thinking about. And I was just, I'm just sitting here thinking about how much I suck as a person, how much I suck as a father, um, how terrible a, uh, a friend I am, how much of a useless waste of space I am. This was the reality. Nothing I did was giving me joy. Nothing I did seemed to have any purpose. I didn't feel like anything in my life was permanent or good. Up to and including the marriage with my wife. I just figured, well, this is going to go away soon. So, you know, why work on it? Now, this was me at my worst. This is me. Rarely now, but it does happen. Happened this weekend. My wife happened to mention something, a personal issue that we've got, that we have to face as a family. And within minutes of her telling me this, I was in the bottom of the shower bawling my eyes out. Thinking that the only option that I had was to break my razor and slip my wrists. Now, 10 years ago, might have done that. But now, I heard those thoughts. I didn't just let them wash over me. I didn't just think them and let them go. I heard them. And then all of the strategies that I put in place, that I use even on the good days, because strategies are no good if you can't use them on the good days, I had to remind myself, you do not want to die. You just want this pain to stop. And the fact is that if you are patient, it will fade. It won't disappear. It won't go away. But it will lack that urgency, 
that power that it has in that moment. Yes, I had an extremely tough weekend with my mental health, but it's Tuesday now. I was able to go out and do two sessions at a workplace yesterday, talking about my experience. in the disability field and my experience living with mental illness. I was able to share. I was able to give hope. In fact, one of the people gave a comment, and I want to share it because it was just so beautiful. I'm, I'm still staggered by this comment. Uh, she's a support worker. She's casual. She's feeling alone and ostracized and uh, out in the cold, which most carers do support workers, um, they're unskilled labour, doing a highly skilled job, frequently feel out of your depth, you frequently feel like you're failing. And she said, before she came into the session that day, she felt like her heart had been lying on a concrete slab, lonely and withering away. But today she felt like, well, yesterday she felt like we'd gotten a pillow and put her heart on that pillow and then pulled some covers over the pillow and told it that everything was going to be okay. You're not alone. So think about that. I went from client crying on the bathroom floor at Sunday morning. Monday afternoon. I'm told that my words had this effect on this woman. Now, I could never have guessed that I would impact somebody in that way. Uh, in fact, I never assume <laughs> that I will impact anyone in that way. It's safer for my mental health if I just uh, kind of, I don't know, just keep everything level. And even don't hope for too much, don't hope for too level, little, don't expect too much, don't expect too little, um, just exist. It's safer. Too much emotion, I go off the deep end. Too little emotion, and I will be one of those dudes that just lets him sit there and rot. I can't tell you how much it meant for this woman to say this to me this week you can't understand the profound difference that it made for me it took my sunday and it and it shone a light on that whole experience to the point where now the issue is still there and it's not good <laughs> um we're okay everything's fine but you know, just life. The issue is still there. But the fact that the day after I had, in the past, what I would consider to be the beginning of a breakdown, massive panic attack, throw me into weeks, if not months, of anguish and trauma and hurt and pain. And then the next day I was able to go out and have that kind of impact on someone. Let's get back to why this is called Don't Listen to the Lies. If I had have listened to the lies in my head, if I had have said, you know what, you're right. Empirically, I can look at my life. I can look at what I'm doing. I can look at the income that I'm bringing in or not bringing in. I can look at the impact that I'm having on my children and I can empirically say that I'm failing. My logical mind, my manly mind, <laughs> I can prove that to myself. But the thing is, I know it's a lie. I know that every day I'm getting better. I know that I am now 10 years, 15 years later, so much better than I was when I was first injured. My wife has gone to work today at many points 
If I had have reacted to something the way I did on Sunday, she would have had to have taken a week off work. I wouldn't have realized that she was taking a week off work. She wouldn't tell me that. But I found out later that that's what she was continually doing. Look, I, I don't know your circumstance. I don't know who you can impact. But the comment that the woman gave us yesterday, and she didn't even give it to me. She gave it to my colleague, and she said, please tell Mark this. It changed everything. So yesterday I was speaking to support workers. Now, I've not spoken out loud about my time as a disability worker outside of a psychiatrist or psychologist's office since I got hurt. I just won't talk about it. I couldn't. I hurt too much. See, because I worked in that field for 18 years, and I loved the job. I thought it was going to be the, my career for the rest of my life. At the time that I was burnt out and then injured, I was in the process of going up into senior management. I was never going to have to look at a client again. <laughs> Can you believe I fought it? <laughs> I got offered promotion after promotion, and I said, no, I like what I'm doing here. I don't want to work in an office. If I had to listen to my mind, if I had have recognized what it was saying, if I had have heard what my mind was saying. These clients are terrible people. They do not deserve you. What is their problem? If I had have heard those thoughts, not just thought them, but heard them, and went, you know what? I'm burning out. I'm at a point where I can't, I shouldn't do this anymore. And I should have said yes instantly to one of those promotions. But I didn't. And I went back into her house for what I thought was the last time in my career, but it was the last time ever. Uh, I was attacked, I got hurt, ended up bleeding and crying in a pool of snot and tears and blood, and my life would never be the same again. And then yesterday, a young woman tells me that I've taken her heart off a concrete floor, put a pillow under it, put a blanket over it, told her that everything was going to be okay. She's not alone. Now, I'm not going to say something stupid like it makes it all worth it because nothing can ever make up for the pain that I've caused my family and that I've been through. But if I'm around just to help one more person feel like that on one more day, then I'm stealing back from mental illness what it took from me. You see, when I got hurt, it was the straw that broke the camel's back. I'd suffered violent attack after violent attack over 18 years. Punches, kicks, bites, stabs, hits with sticks, hit with bricks, rocks thrown at me. And I considered this to be normal. This was just my job. This is what we do. Never once considering that all those things were hurting me. Because I'd sit in my doctor's office and he'd say, okay, let's talk about this incident. And I'd say, it's not that bad. I kind of have been through worse. Stopped a, a, a deranged teen from raping another staff member. Uh, a, young, a, a little woman attacked by a dude much bigger than her. Um, I've been attacked by people with knives before. Started unpacking, started getting me to tell those stories. And stories which I'd told in fun. I'd made light of it, made jokes out of it started coming back to me and it started hitting me how desperately I was hurting and how much I was not listening to the truth behind what was going in my mind. 
Because in my mind, it was telling me, you can do it. You can make it. You are tough. I wasn't. Well, I was. But mental health is a finite resource. You can only damage it so many times before you're going to lose it. You may be like me. You may be listening or hearing voices in your head. You may have that negative narrative going on in your mind as much as I do, maybe more. But the thing of it is that when we hear the lies for what they are, this idea that you are useless, that there is no hope. I had no idea. Didn't even, didn't even enter my thinking that that day, something that I do often, something that I do in all kinds of mental health, something that is beneficial for me, going out and talking about my mental illness, was going to create that beautiful image in a woman's heart because I could understand exactly what she's been through. And I can tell her to just be kind to herself. Your mind is not kind. Your mental illness is not a friend. Your mental illness is trying to destroy you. Don't listen to it. Find the rays of sunshine. And if you can't, just be patient. Just wait. Don't do anything that your family will regret for the rest of their lives. Stay another day. Be patient. You really are. You really are worth it. Hey, have a great week. I'll speak to you next time. This has been Shattered the Podcast. Have a great day. Hey, thanks for joining us on Shattered the Podcast. I'm Mark. Special thanks to my producer, Meredith Brosnan, and also to Torian, Kevin, and Lorraine. And we can't forget the amazing band Adelaide who let us use their song as our theme. For more information, check us out on all your socials, STP Shattered the Podcast.